Well, what do we hold dear? Well, there you'll see. We give you an outline of our basic beliefs. But here's the thing about First Baptist. In essential beliefs, we think it's important that we all be on the same page. And what is the essential belief? That there's one way to heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. There's no other way except through Him. We also believe that there's only one book that we go by, and that's the Word of God, that that's the Bible. That's what we, we stand on. And we also believe that, you know, the very basic beliefs about Jesus, He was a, you know, born of a virgin. You know, He laid His life down. Nobody murdered Him. Nobody killed Him. He, he gave His life for us. There's a trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Those are the essential beliefs. And we all, we've got to agree on those things. Now, the non-essential beliefs, there's liberty. There's liberty. You say, well, well what are non-essential beliefs? Well, I know there are some people who interpret uh, Scripture to believe that, uh, you know, where the Bible says that there are times when you pray that, uh, you know, that the Holy Spirit will pray for you or there will be groanings in your heart or whatever. You know, somebody says, preacher, do you believe that somebody you know, prays in tongues? Can they do that? Well, I'll be the first to tell you, you know, I don't experience that. Now, there's been times when I just couldn't come up with the words, and I just said, Lord, they're yours. Holy Spirit, you, you're just going to have to say what you need to say. But I'm also not going to put God in the box and say what he can't say, you know, through, or what he wants to do through somebody else. But at the same time, I believe that, you know, if you have some type of, you know, prayer language like that, you're not going to go around bragging about it. You know why? Because then that draws attention to you. And anything that we receive from Jesus, it should be pointing attention to him. And so, you know, there's, there's liberty there. I'm, I'm not going to get into the doctrinal debate over that. I believe there's transitional gifts, and I can go into a whole lot of conversation on that if you want to, where, you know, in Mark, he gave a commission to the apostles, and uh, in Matthew, we have the commission to the church. And so, you know, you can, we can talk about that all day long if you all want to. But uh, you'll see there our, our essential beliefs and what we believe about the Holy Spirit, about scriptures, that all humans are, are made in the image of God. I mean, every one of us. And, uh, you know, and we all sin. And, uh, you know, we come into this world with that bent towards sin and eternal security. Thank you. Uh, you know, we believe that if you've truly been saved, you can't be unsaved. Because here again, I didn't do anything to get saved. He did it all. Now, if I help myself get saved, then I can unhelp myself. But the good news is, he did it. You say, well, but what if somebody you know, like Josh Harris, some of these guys that wrote books, you know, and, you know, I kiss a dating goodbye, and, and uh, you know, it's not love, it's lust. I mean, Josh, Joshua Harris wrote some great books that have been used, but now he's come out in the last couple of months and said, I, you know, I don't believe any of that. I'm not a Christian. Well, if he was really saved, he can, he can say that, but you know what? It ain't going to happen. I mean, God's going to whoop him in line, and he's going to come back. But if he never was saved, and he really believes that, then he was never saved. But you can't be saved and then decide one day you're unsaved. It's sort of like, did you know even an adoption? Uh, once I adopted Abigail, I can't unadopt her. <laughs> She's mine. Did you know in the first century in that culture that an adopted child had had firstborn birthright, even over children in that family, which means if we were following the Middle Eastern culture, even though Aaron was born eight years before Abby and he was actually born of our blood, that when we adopted Abby, she became the firstborn status. And in the, in the Middle Eastern culture, she, got, she would get a double portion. <laughs> and I think she did. I think she has gotten a double portion, at least in prayers. You know, I think so. But uh, it was, it's, you know... Girls are great, amen. And, uh, but, but, you know, baptism, Lord's Supper, you know, giving, evangelism, the church, Christian unity, those are all essentials. So, be sure to read the Articles of Faith because that's one of the things we ask you to do. There's not anything out of the ordinary. Uh, we do live in a day and time where there is a lot of talk about, you know, people's choices about marriage and, and same-sex marriage and how do we treat that. Well, if you look at the very back of your Articles of Faith, this is a, a statement of belief that David Gibbs wrote. I don't know if any of y'all remember Terry Shavo a few years back. They, David Gibbs represented Terry. 
and uh, he, he represents the National Center for Law and Justice, and, uh, or Life and Liberty, NCLL, National Center for Life and Liberty. Uh, but David Gibbs wrote this, and it is written in a way that it will stand the test of the Supreme Court. If, if, our, if a church that has this as their belief uh, is ever challenged, David Gibbs said, I will come and represent you pro bono because, you know, we have followed his guidelines here. But it simply says, we believe that God has commanded that no intimate sexual activity be engaged in outside of a marriage between a man and a woman. We believe that any form of homosexuality, lesbianism, bisexuality, bestiality, incest, fornication, adultery, transgenderism, pornography, are sinful perversions of God's gift of sex. We believe that God disapproves of and forbids any attempt to alter one's gender by surgery or appearance. We believe that the term of marriage has only one legitimate meaning, and that is marriage, sanct marriage sanctioned by God, which joins one woman and one man in a single covenantal union as delineated by Scripture. Marriage ceremonies performed in any facility owned, leased, or rented by this church will only be those ceremonies sanctioned by God, joining one man with one woman as that gender was determined at birth. And uh, so that's who we are. You say, well, preacher, does that mean, you know, taking that strong of a stand? If somebody is walking in that lifestyle right now, does that mean they cannot attend here? Listen to me. 100% absolutely no. It does not mean that. Because you know what? Every one of us has junk. And every one of us has issues. But, you know, if somebody is, is choosing to walk in that room to come here because I'm praying that, that they will see how a Christian can love them unconditionally and that we will trust that the Holy Spirit and God in His time will bring them to truth. 